Thank you, Karen, for uh, all that you've done here, and uh, thank you, Larry, for a great panel. And uh, I'll greet you with my usual greeting to wake you up a little bit. Uh, hello, fellow freeloaders. Aren't you glad Jerry Brown is gone, finally? It's like the Night of the Living Dead. They keep coming back. And let me tell you, we don't need to replace him with Gavin Newsom, because if, if Jerry Brown is the adult in the room in Sacramento, Gavin Newsom is the teenager with a bottle of whiskey and the car keys. Well, uh, as you heard, I'm a businessman. I'm running for governor. I, uh, I have a, thank you, I have a history. I, wanna, I want you to get to know me. I want you to know that I'm running for a big idea. I'm running to change this from a blue state to a red state. And let me tell you, I take issue with this, the fact that this is considered a blue state. This is a red state with two big blue blotches. And it's just like my home state of Illinois, which is a red state with a big blotch in Chicago. And that's what I want to talk about really quickly is my history in Chicago. And that is, my mother was a Chicago school teacher, a single mom who raised four kids on a school teacher's salary. I actually worked my way through college, through law school. I built a business. I built a business by solving problems. Yes, Susan, you're absolutely right. We need to be able to solve problems. I know why Travis Allen's running for governor, because he's been knocking his head against the wall for five years in Sacramento and got nothing done. And you can make wonderful speeches, but you know what? We've got to get this state turned around. We don't have time. Let me, let me introduce you to my political background, because you all know that I'm a businessman and I built businesses. But I've also been a conservative activist my whole life. I was on Jack Kemp's steering committee when he ran for president in 1987. I think Travis was in junior high back then, maybe learning how to surf. I, I, I was one of the first members of the Club for Growth with Larry Kudlow and Steve Moore. I believe in economic growth. I believe in less government. I believe in the Kemp uh, agenda. And you know, Jack Kemp was right here, was from right here in Los Angeles, right? His father was a small trucking company owner. And Jack believed in opportunity. He believed in, uh, in entrepreneurship. And you know what? I believe most voters believe in those principles too, don't you? We need to bring those principles to every voter in this state. Now the issue is, how are we going to do that? We need to talk to them about solutions, but we need to get the message through. You want to know why this is a single party state right now? Go back to the, the 70s, because Jerry Brown opened the floodgates. He allowed the public sector unions to organize and to contribute to political campaigns, right? Do you know how many public sector workers we have in the state right now? Two million. At $1,000 a piece, you're talking about a war chest of $2 billion a year. I'm a member of Lincoln Club and New Majority down in San Diego. I think in 2016, we may have raised and spent $20 million. Think about that for a second. And what happens in California? Campaigns are all about the money. And why? Why do, why do, why do Democrats get the vote that they do? Because first of all, they can afford to pay an army of workers, including a lot of union workers, to go door to door, identify their voters, and pull them out. What do we do? We don't have anywhere near the resources, so we've got to get our message out through more traditional means and in the media. And we know how the media is stacked against us. What we have to do is, first of all, I agree with all the panelists, we have to have a strong message. We have to solve problems. We have to let people know that we want parents to have the choice of a good education for their parents, just like Bill Clinton and Barack Obama did. We need to make sure that people understand that you don't make housing more affordable by subsidizing it with a $9 billion housing bond like John Chung wrote about today in the uh, Orange County Register. We've got to make sure that we get our roads built without corruption. Do you know that Texas spends a dollar for every four and a half dollars that California spends to build a mile of road? Do you know that? 
That's corruption. That's corruption personified, and that is what goes on in Sacramento. Because Sacramento, because of the huge campaigns that are all about television and armies of workers, Sacramento is controlled by the special interests, the funding interests. And you know what? I didn't just roll out of bed and decide to run, a, run for governor. We did polling. The polling says 80 to 90 percent of the voters in this state believe that Sacramento is owned by the special interests. 80 to 90 percent. You can't even get 80 to 90 percent of people to agree that the sun rises in the east. But they will agree that their, polit their political leadership is owned by special interests. So what are we going to do about it? Well, I'm not just running for governor, I'm sponsoring a ballot initiative, which as of this moment has 500,000 signatures. This is a ballot initiative, it's called the Neighborhood Legislature. You'll hear about it in the coming months. Art Laffer, everybody remember Art Laffer? Reagan's economic advisor and written quite extensively about the problems in California. As a matter of fact, he's one of those people that moved out, right? He moved to Tennessee. Art Laffer, a friend of mine for 30 years, he said that this is the idea that can bring California back because it makes voters relevant again. Bill Simon, remember Bill Simon? He enthusiastically endorsed this, said it was the genius of an idea to bring the voters back into the picture. Newt Gingrich told me, I was Newt Gingrich's finance chairman in California in 2012. Newt Gingrich told me that this idea is even more powerful than I think it is. And all it does is a simple concept. It reduces the size of legislative districts to neighborhoods so that we can go door to door talking about solutions, talking about our ideas. And we believe, we believe in our ideas, don't we? We believe that individual initiative is the way to solve our problems. We believe in the free market. Guess what? Most people out there don't believe that firemen and policemen should be able to retire at age 50 on 90% of their salaries. They know that that's unsustainable. Am I right? They also know that third grade teachers shouldn't get tenure. I don't have tenure. Do you have tenure? If we can get an army of trained people to go, candidates, for local office, candidates for the state legislature to go door to door in tiny districts. I'm talking about a couple thousand voters is all I'm talking about. Just like New Hampshire does. Look it up. We can communicate our principles and our ideas and I believe that we'll win. But we have to get a level playing field in order to do this. We have to, we have to build bridges between our ideas and, and the voters. Right now, the voters get one side. They get a, a worker, a young college student who goes to their door and says, we're going to give you free health care. Don't vote for those evil Republicans. They just represent big business. Well, I got to tell you, I'm a small businessman. And most people in this state work and have small businesses, don't they? Many of you are small business people. Small business people in this state are getting crushed. And the big businesses and the big labor unions and the environmental groups and the trial lawyers, they love having control of Sacramento. They love preserving the status quo. And why is the status quo called the status quo? Because somebody is making money from it. If we get a chance to communicate that idea door to door, I believe we win. I believe we turn the state around. I'm not running for governor just to make small changes. You know, we can get the gas tax repealed. I'm all for it. But I'm all for getting rid of the crushing regulation that kills small business, right? I'm, I'm getting rid of the waste and corruption in government. I'm a CPA. I can't wait to take a hatchet. Forget about a scalpel. Take a hatchet to the governmental agencies that are wasting our tax dollars and putting us in, more into debt every single day. I'll close with a little story. I bought a potato chip company in Chicago. Borden, remember Borden? Borden owned this potato chip company. They larded up with all kinds of crony deals and corrupt deals, and it was losing $17 million a year when I bought it. 
How, that's a neat trick, by the way, how to lose $17 million on $100 million in sales because of corruption and cronyism. And I built a bridge. I, I recruited experts, and we built a bridge to take this company from a $17 million loss to a $3 million profit in one year. And we executed on it. We did it by analyzing what needed to be done and executing and getting it done. I intend to bring that kind of problem solving, that kind of team building to both the Republican Party and to the state of California. Join me in this effort. Be a part of this team. I welcome you with open arms. We can turn this state red again, and most importantly, make it the golden state and functional once more. Thank you very much.